from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Quebec. This Mass is offered for the intentions of the family, for those attending the Mass, and for those at home. Our thanks to our donor for making it possible for tens of thousands of the faithful across Canada and around the world to share in this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate worthily now the mystery of our faith, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And the Lord said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. I praise you, for I 
am wonderfully made. For it was you who for my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God made David king of our ancestors. In his testimony about him, God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my heart, who will carry out all my wishes. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had already proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his work, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but one is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandals on his feet. You descendants of Abraham's family and others who fear God, to us the message of this salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, 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 Lord. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. All of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Today, the church celebrates the birth of St. John the Baptist. At the same time, I think the feast and the readings and the prayers of today's Mass lead us to reflect upon our own baptismal call to be a prophetic people. We, too, are called to be voices in the wilderness of our own world, calling out to others to prepare the way of the Lord, to repent, to believe in the gospel, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And I think that several things emerge for our reflection. First of all, here in the context of Luke's account of the story of the birth of the Baptist, he is described as being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And in this way, the gospel emphasizes that it is no less than the Holy Spirit who is at work empowering the Baptist. The power of the Spirit shines forth in John's words, in his example, assuring the audience and his, that his speech is divinely inspired, that his message originates from God himself. So it is that John is not only a messenger sent by God, but is more than a prophet. Yes, a prophet, but more than a prophet, as Jesus himself states in the Gospel of Matthew. The power of the Holy Spirit is at work in the infancy narratives, the births of the Baptist and of Jesus, and we see it at work in our Lord's life and ministry, of course, on the great feast of Pentecost. And all of this to foreshadow a future time when God will pour out abundantly his Holy Spirit upon all of the faithful. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit will enable then the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation, the plan announced by John. And uh, this is something that, again, uh, we, we pray about and we look forward to with, with great hope and great, uh, great consolation. So it is that secondly, today's feast invites us to reflect upon our own call to be a priestly, prophetic, and royal people. We're called to be a priestly people, that is to live the life of holiness here from the time of our baptism. A prophetic people, aspiring always to give witness concretely to the very high standard of moral and social ethics to which the gospel calls us. And we're led to reflect also on, on our own call to live as a royal people, that is a people who prepare every day for the, the arrival of this kingdom, the kingdom of God being prepared even now as we await it with great anticipation. And throughout the example of the Baptist serves to remind us of the importance of the life of holiness. This involves a steady, ongoing commitment, a commitment on our part every day as we recommit ourselves every day to draw closer to God through the life of prayer, through the sacramental life of the church. In addition to the life of holiness, to ongoing conversion, and as an expression of both, John calls us to exercise justice in our dealings with others, to be generous with the poor. Here, his message foreshadows the Lord's own teachings concerning discipleship, and I think this is still a very relevant message in our own time, as we are called to do our own part to show the Father's love concretely to, by doing something for the poor, visiting the sick, reaching out to the lonely, to the depressed, comforting those who mourn, and working toward justice and peace in our world today. Thirdly and finally, the life of the Baptist, along with the voices of the prophets of old, serve to remind us that God's message is always destined to be opposed in this world. The world has always been hostile to the news of the arrival of this kingdom, to its values of selfless love, of peace among nations, of mercy, and again, of the humble and loving service of our neighbor. John the Baptist, like Jesus, like his followers, uh, all were rejected by the society of their time. So we see also in the example of the prophets, the martyrs, the saints, uh, as they were, but continue to be rejected in our own time. Indeed, when we reflect upon the figure of the Baptist and the Old Testament prophets, we think of Elijah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and others, we see how difficult it is to announce God's truth before a disbelieving world. In our own time, John inspires us to be that voice for the voiceless, the poorest of the poor, growing in number every day in our society, for all whose freedoms may be oppressed in the world. To be a prophetic voice means speaking out against the excesses of our time. See, the excesses of a certain kind of com uh, consumerism, culture of death in all of its forms, the ever-expanding practice of euthanasia, all these things demand that we speak out clearly. Here then is the call to be like John, that voice crying out in the wilderness of a postmodern, post-human, and now more and more post-truth society. John never accommodated God's message to the values of the world, never watered down this message to reach a wider audience, even when he found himself in direct conflict with the political forces of his time. Inspired then by John's example, let us walk joyfully in the light of the Holy Spirit on our own journey through this passing world. And let us do so in a way that we may be, along with the Baptist, a bright light shining in the darkness as we prepare the way for the mighty one, the mightier one indeed, Jesus Christ, who baptizes not with water, but with fire and with the Holy Spirit. Despite the roar of the world, despite the dark and powerful forces of anti-evangelization that oppose the arrival of the kingdom in our own time, 
let us rejoice at the same time that the kingdom is in the process of arising, of arriving, indeed is arriving, as we know Jesus himself is present in the Eucharist that we're celebrating. So we continue to celebrate this Mass, and we pray that, like the Baptist, we too may live out our call to be a prophetic people. Let us devote ourselves to preparing the way of the Lord, to do so first and foremost in our own hearts, here in the words of Origen. It is there in our hearts that we should begin to build the straight and narrow paths, there in the human heart where the Word of God enters and comes to dwell. Let us pray that through our witness to the gospel, the eyes of many in our time may be open to the power of the Holy Spirit, that they may see the salvation prepared by God for all nations and the salvation announced by John the Baptist. Let us now profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in the life everlasting. Amen. And confident now that God hears the voices of all who seek his mercy, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all those who are in need. Let us pray for the intention of today's Mass, for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord our May our annual celebration of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus renew and deepen our faith in his love for us. May he guide us as we seek to walk the path of mercy, compassion, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the persecuted, for all who live in the margins of our society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions that we recall now in the silence of our own hearts. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know the needs of your people in this passing life. We ask you to hear the prayers we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. This water, remind me, come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us, to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, with praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We place these offerings upon your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when at last he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought, brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. 
he alone among all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of God, the Lamb of redemption, to make holy the flowing waters. He baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by shedding his blood. So now with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us extend to those around us a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Christ, bring us all to everlasting. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.